All right. Gang, what's going on? Dominic is out here in Chicago, Wing Chun. Again, we do a little bit of a backyard Wing Chun for today. Uh, I apologize about the backlighting, the sunglasses, no disrespect to you. I just can't see, and I want to make sure I see you. All right. This is going to be the ultimate why Wing Chun, the first form, is proof it's anti-grappling or it's gra grappling applications. And it's everything that your Sifu probably cannot answer. A couple different things I'm going to qual qualify in this far, or qualify and quantify in this statement is, number one, I started wrestling when I was 12 years old. For those who don't know my background, I came from a very extensive wrestling background, got into Wing Chun, was very uncomfortable going from a stance that was like this, very low to the ground, obviously all my weight heavy. If I can get back all the way out here, you know, it was all the way back out, this kind of stance, you know, and then to my first teacher was, you know, this stance, that 70-30 application. That being said, everything I talk about, it's not for me. It's not for me to prove whether or not I can make work. It's to prove whether or not you can actually make it work. I'm adjusting for a second to get a better angle. Um, meaning that anything I say, it doesn't, if I do it with a partner, it's, it's entertainment purposes, right? You've got to take what I say and apply it in your application to see whether or not Izzo's full of shit, right? So that being said, I want to get through this. You've all seen the first form, right? What you do is you chamber, you sink, open your feet, open your feet, and you can't see the downside of where my feet are right now. I apologize for that. I've done other videos for this, and there's a whole, there's a litany of, of Wing Chun videos in the first form. One of the things I'm going to argue about is, and I'll come back for this position, maybe if I'm far back here, is if I wind up sinking and then I open my feet, oh, hell with it. If I wind up opening my feet at 45 degrees, then I open them again, literally, I'm going to show you where I'm at here. Sink, open, open. My heels, you see how close my legs are? The, my one argument has always been that Wing Chun was a, it's a Chinese martial art, Southern Chinese martial art. Well, I would argue that you're going to find very large statued men and women in, in China. You're going to find probably the average height is between five foot five and five eight. That being said, I'm five seven, 225 pounds. So let's talk about some physical attributes that you have to get out of your head first if you're going to be training Wing Chun. Well, Wing Chun, you have to X, Y, and Z. If it's a conceptual martial art, the concept of have to has to go out the window. If you stick to and adhere to the Chinese method of opening your feet to 45 degrees and pivoting on your toes, you will, I don't know what you'll feel. That's a wrong statement. I'm not going to say you will feel. You are going to feel what you're going to feel. If you're comfortable there and you have great balance, that means that your shoulders are narrow. If you feel stress on your knees, that, that, great. If you don't feel stress on your knees, great. Whatever you have to do. The first form, the number one thing you have to learn is balance. If you do not have balance, you cannot fight. I don't care what the situation is. And that is why Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and wrestling are so extremely effective is because they remove balance by being on the ground. You have no balance. I mean, you have no balance issues there, right? You're on the ground. You can apply everything. You have the ultimate equalizer as far as balance goes. So I'm going to suggest, I'm not going to tell you how to do it. You do it. You sink, you open your feet, open your heels. I would suggest making a, an adjustment, you'll see my steps is sink, open, open, and then I adjust a little wider, I go to where my heels are the distance of my shoulders. I want that hourglass, right? I want to be 50-50. I want my balance to be where it needs to be because if I just sink, open 45, open 45, I am so narrow, my knees are hurting, they're tucked in, and I can't project that tripod going out into the ground. So I have to make an adjustment. Step number one, when you open your stance, I don't care what your Sifu says, rules are made to be broken and any good Sifu will accept a question and will be able to answer. So if my students say, hey, you know, this hurts my knees, blah, blah, I will say, well, there's gotta be a training aspect. You know, is it, knee, is it painful? Is it stress? Is it musculature exhaustion? Which is it? Because if it's muscle exhaustion, that means it's your horse stance, we gotta work that longer. If it's stress, well, let's try opening your toes a little bit but let's also try widening out your heels because we still want to maintain the integrity of a triangle coming forward. You're, and if you ask your Sifu a question and they're threatened with your answer or your question and they can't answer, you're, you got the wrong Sifu. Secondly, we've talked about the concept of independence, right? I'm very big on, uh, no, I'll get to this first. I'm very big, right? So if you look at my old videos, 
Yeah, I, I've gained. I mean, I, I was 170 in the videos I did 12 years ago. I'm 225 now. I love to lift heavy weights. Well, you shouldn't lift weights for Wing Chun. Well, does, does that mean that I'm going to stop an activity I love doing, eating carbs and lifting heavy weights, because of the off chance that one day I may be in a fight again? To me, that's not worth it. And that's one of the most ridiculous things of Wing Chun ever is. You shouldn't lift weights in Wing Chun. And then you need to be a certain body type. Remember when people talk about you have to get your elbow as close to center as possible. Well, my question is what happens when you get a thick pec, tight back, tight shoulders, or your gut gets thick like mine? Does this mean that only skinny people can do Wing Chun? Does that mean that the art is only effective for people who are of a certain frame? It's just a question. Because if we're going to stick to the, to the musts and the do's, then that means Philip Bayer is an invalid Wing Chun teacher because literally he cannot even form a Fuchs out because he's missing a hand. So when you're doing the art, if you're five foot 10, 400 pounds, and this is where you get your elbow to center, or if you're, I don't know, five foot five, 110 pounds, and this is where you get your elbow center because you've got a damaged shoulder, remember, you have to work within the concepts to make it fit your body. It's all about taking the pressure coming in. And let's get forward to that for a second. The anti-grappling is found in the first section when it comes down to two aspects. The first is defining your center fighting line. And the second is the Fuxiao section. This is anti-grappling. I'm going to explain why. I've talked about this many times, but I think this is so essential. The first thing is, is when you're defining your center fighting line, you're showing that your body is your every energy is always going forward in every direction. It's a defining principle of Wing Chun, right? From this angle, going down and forward, and then up and forward, in this range of motion, in an infinite amount of angles, you are defining that your energy is going forward, but on any plane possible, your energy is also going down or up. So what does that mean? What are we doing here? We're, we're kind of defining straight lines and spirals to a degree. And if you've ever experienced two energies going in opposite directions, chum Q, you're going to be finding out that it's very difficult for the human body to, uh, to, 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 to capitalize against it, right? So in other words, what I mean by that is if you have somebody, a student of yours or a classmate, have them push into you one way. Like hold your arm out in a lun south position and tell them to push down and it'll go into your shoulder. Tell them to push in and it'll go into your tricep. Tell them to push down and in and see if you can hold it. Tell them push up and in, see if they can hold it. Your body cannot handle two energies going at the simultaneous time in opposite directions. That being said, we're moving forward. It's also teaching us that both sides of the body have to go forward, even in a turn. I've done this on the last video. I was talking about when you turn, I was talking about this in depth. Even though that one side is going forward, the other side is back, you have to be going forward all the time. Forward, forward. If you turn one side of your body off, and remember, this is not for me to display and demo. This is for you to feel. Out. Write the, you should be writing these down and say, this is what I'm trying class today. All right, I'm put a punch out. Just leave it here for a static position and have one of your classmates push into you and see where it affects you, right? And then do some adjustments. Maybe dig your other hip underneath. See what happens. Turn this side off underneath. Bring up your Wu Sao like this with no energy, no energy and intent, and have them push into you. What happens? Put now project from your spine, after you draw energy up from the earth, out your shoulder, out your elbow, out your pisiform bone in a flex position for Wusao, reinforce that behind your wrist and have them push. Extend your lats forward. Do not use your triceps. Don't use your shoulders. Use your lat going forward and your hips going forward and have your class weight push into your punch. Push it. See how stronger your structure is. Now, the point for this is to understand where your body structure lies in receiving pressure, but remember, it's going to change moment to moment to moment to moment to moment because people aren't going to be pushing into you, pushing into you. They're going to be pushing and changing levels, pushing and then punching. You don't, it's instantaneous, right? It's the same thing with roots. One of the things I learned from root years ago is that the root is always constant. Just because you're in this position, and I mocked the other day the concept of, you know, uh, take, taking energy in and putting it into a scale, the root is for a second because you're not going to stand here and, and punch like this or you're not going to see in a fight like this. People are going to be moving, and you're constantly going to be moving 
in your attacks or treating going forward, whatever the circumstance dictates that your tactics are, your route always changes. So defining your center fighting line is not just defining your center fighting line. It's defining forward, forward energy going forward and the entirety of head to toe, those angles that you wind up protecting or attacking are infinite from the top of your head to all the way to the floor or bottom of your feet are. Okay, that's one concept. When it comes down to the Fuchs South section, right? We start Tan Sound. I've talked about this a million times. If this takes you an hour to do, it better be intentional on your part for the understanding of a relationship of every joint in your body. What I mean by that is you don't do it arbitrarily slowly because the Sifu told you to, because Ip Man had his students do this section for an hour. Can your Sifu ask, answer these questions? When you are training in your stance or in anything, you should always be thinking, I'm nothing more than a series of joints, ankles, knee, hips, spine, shoulders, elbows, wrists. Everything is, is just joints. That's all it is. So if I'm putting this mo mo motion out there, I've got to be thinking independently of these little, everything's like, everything's like a, a ball bearing, right? Giant ball bearing here, giant ball bearing here, 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 spine is more. And, and remember, this is where the mind fuck of Wing Chun is. Everything is going in every direction that is going up and down and forward. And at the same time, what energy am I receiving that can also reinforce back into the ground when given pressure? I know this is a lot. That's why uh, I want to be very detailed on this. Stop the video, go back, record, uh, rewrite it, take your notes down, ask me questions, I'll explain it. In this, in this section, remember I told you, you're not gaining elbow energy. And energy is energy, energy circumstantial. How can any Sifu out there judge if somebody, if their student has a proper elbow energy? Is it because in a displayed context, they can move a student superiorly than somebody else can? Because last time I checked, energy and intent are invisible. It, it, it's invisible, Wing Chun. There's just some things we can't teach. We can feel, but outside of a controlled demonstration, do you truly understand what elbow energy is? Elbow energy, I think of more of elbow relationship. My elbow should have a relationship from my hips to my spine to my uh, um, other hip to my wrist to my knees, to my ankles, everything. And the reason being is, if we're standing in this position, right, and a hand goes out because this is going to be our primary attacker as a hand. Yes, we have legs out there for kicks as well too, but if you pick a leg up, what happens? Your balance goes, right? Because you, you one leg up, you have balance now on one leg. So we're gonna talk about the hands in this video for the most part, but if I stick a weapon out, now what do we have? Your weapon is nothing more then the, the, it's not even the barrel of a gun because the energy and intent you put out, that's the bullet, right? And the thing about Selim Dao is, so many people think it's the cat's ass, but you could train Selim Dao all day long, but if you don't put it in an application, it's the same thing as getting your pistol out, dry firing, you re-racking the slide, dry firing, re-racking the slide, dry firing, and not having any energy from the recoil of the pistol or even having somebody while you dry fire, somebody else uh, racks the slide for you so you get energy coming into you. Remember, when you put energy into something, a, uh, even, that's why wall bags are the great grace because they give no give and they're into the wall. When you give energy into a wall bag, you hit it, that energy's also gotta come back to you. Where does it go? You're gonna be learning, put energy on and turning everything off and let it come into you and sink to the ground. There's a lot of things you're gonna be learning. But if you don't have that, right, and you could punch into a wall very, very gently, you could do a ton of things. But when it comes down to why are we doing this section so slow, a couple different reasons, and I've talked about this many times. Number one, it's so that you don't let this side drift forward, right? Because this side is pulling back and engaging while this side is going forward. So how do you keep that engaged, right? This goes back to the hip concept. But we want to talk about anti-grappling. The point being is every single one of your tools, punch, tan sao, gan sao, bong sao, pak sao, wu sao, bil sao, jump sao, I don't care what it is, has to have a recipient at the other end of it, right? Meaning I'm going to tan da. My tan is going to meet energy. My punch is going to meet energy. I'm going to gan sao and da. Same thing. I'm going to Bill Sal, for those who want to do the fingertips to the eyes, whatever. If you're, not, if you're not sandbagging your fingers, 
every single day for the next 20 years. For those of you who think you're gonna bill sell somebody, you're gonna do the Bruce Lee, finger somebody in the eyes and reinforce by tucking in, guys, you're full of shit. You're gonna break your fingers on the top of somebody's head and you're gonna be fuck. And then all of a sudden your, your game is done. You wanna sacrifice two inches for this, for this, for this, you're out of your mind. But I digress. Everything has to have a meat, right? Punch meat. It's there, makes get contact. How does it absorb back into your body? So if I'm, if I'm imagining this, if I'm going through the motions while I'm doing my seal them down, what am I actually picturing during this? A lot of people think that have said that, you know, here's the legends I've heard over the years in my Wing Chun training. Well, we do this three times to honor both the outside gate and the inside gate of the form. Okay. We do this three times so that we're aware of the, the muscular structure of our forearm with energy going forward in the Fuk Sao or in the William Chung lineage, the dog paw by torquing it up, will veer somebody's center line off. Okay, all of that could be correct, that's great. I've heard that Ibman had his students do this for an hour so he can go downstairs and smoke opium while they were working on their horse dance. The biggest takeaway I want you to think about is how does your body react prior to getting energy in? Here's what I mean. Specifically, it's this. As your Wu Sao comes back, are you watch the distance between your, tor your torso and your wrist. As you're closing it in, are you closing? Is the gap closing here, but the gap between your elbow and your body is not closing? Or is your elbow pulling back in and your wrist is not getting closer on its own? In other words, remember, there's a pivoting, or excuse me, there's a pistoning with your elbow and there's a pivoting on your elbow. You need to be aware of both of them because they're both valid. Doesn't matter what you do, as energy is coming back, you have to start thinking, how is my body being prepared for energy coming in because these are the barriers. Palm strike, pak sao, da, tan sao, gan sao, bong sao, everything that comes out of your wrist is a barrier between your enemy and you and ultimately where that punch goes in. Could be a push, could be a grab. Even when you grab, are you committed and you're frozen into your body or frozen in your arms, your intent is locked in, or are you aware of where your body's at so that the arms are merely the, the, the barrel, the energy where the, uh, the, of the gun where the energy is coming out of. These are all things you got to be asking yourself all the time when you study Wing Chun. This is what a lot of Sifus cannot, they just can't answer. Or they won't answer. They don't even know what the fuck they're answering about. But I'm getting back to this. You're learning from this position too. One of the biggest things we saw from the first section is how far your body can go before you start to lose balance and intent. Right? So what does that tell you? That tells you from the first set, from the defining the center fighting line, we know that me specifically with my anatomy, that this is my greatest distance of protection. Any further, I'm gonna be violating myself. Any further back, I'm gonna be, any closer, I'll be violating myself. So my job was to understand the relationship of where my body mechanics lie in relation to my stance. Because remember, I said it all the time over the years, you're a 50 caliber uh, uh, rifle and you're on a tripod. That tripod is allowing the energy to go forward and the recoil to be coming, recoil to be coming back. So if my tripod is not emphasized enough, which is why we go over so much, the hips focus down in the floor, 50-50 stance, the, both, the, the entire body going forward and down and up, that's your tripod. When the energy goes out, you've got to have that recoil coming back in, or is it coming back in? I don't want to get into too much of the argument of the, over the brilliance of the stance because, guys, are you doing 70-30, and you're on a hill, it's got an incline? Good luck with that one. How's your tripod fixed? This is the section where you're gonna learn where that energy goes out. More importantly, for anti-grappling purposes, where does it come back in? When you start, this is, it, this is nothing more than dry firing, car simulating before you get out on I-90 in Chicago. Um, I pick a skill set where you have to develop attributes first before trying it and applying it. I don't care if it's you're learning basketball and you're 
shooting free throws for an entire year before you ever get involved in a game. After you've done this, have a student, a classmate, give, put, have them put pressure, about five pounds of pressure into you as you go back, as you're retreating back. Is your tricep activated? Are you pushing forward? Or are you feeling the embrace? Where are your hips engaged? When you get pressure in, does that engage your butt cheeks and your hips? As are your abs tense? Are they are your shoulders off? It's not just a movement, it's a concept. All right. Am I allowing pressure to come in to collect? Oh, once this comes back here, wh oh, where does this reinforce? This is why I can't demo this because it doesn't matter if I know it or not. It's whether or not you can do it. When you're in this position and energy is coming back, al remember along the planes of your head to your toe, are you able to receive energy coming in where it doesn't collapse your structure? where it doesn't violate your balance and where it fundamentally puts you in a position to use the opposite side to attack. The entire first form screams anti-grappling. People just don't know how to use it. They're so focused on the hands. They're so focused on the flashy bong, gone, oh, elbow, bilgy, oh, chain punch. They're so focused on that garbage that they're not understanding their relationship with the rest of the body. You have to discover the slow energies coming in first, and you'll see your chi cell is stand-up grappling without, uh, without dedication, meaning or commitment. When you grab a wrist, you're committed, right? So I, and, and I'll look at it this way, too. I, one of the things our students are, are always trained is we go for the throat because, A, it's primary target, especially if you're bigger than somebody. But you got to be careful. What's your intent? When you you want to strike and punch somebody in the throat, and that's it. Go to you're going to jail because they're going to the morgue. Or do you want to find that pathway, go up to the throat, grab the throat, and control, use that energy, pin into a wall, you know, grab the throat, then go down the collar, strangle. Are you saying that's not Wing Chun at that point? Because you got to a target, throat, curvature of the jaw, floating ribs, midsection, whatever it is. Once you get to the target, what do you choose to do with it? It's up to you. Well, then it becomes grappling. No, it doesn't. It's all Wing Chun. Gra there's grappling in Wing Chun in every, every single section. Tan Sao, Yun Sao, grab chamber. It's in every single friggin' section of every form in Wing Chun. But we'll talk about that later on, too. The anti-grappling lives in your ability to take energy coming in while keeping your distance safe and giving energy in again. I've done this video before uh, with, the two, with the two wrestlers I had in years ago. I stopped every one of their takedowns with jump sow energy. And if you don't know how brilliant jump sow energy is, from, you know, from the jump sow angle, you're getting on one plane, center line going forward. Another plane, center line going forward. Another plane, center line going forward. Knees, everything, center line is going forward. Jump sow is br it's one of my favorite controlling energies. The questions you have to ask yourself are, can you take energy coming in and at what speed? Because the more you practice it, the more it's going to vary. But it's found in the dynamics of not just your tonsil going forward, because your tonsil is going forward. It's not to wedge off to the side, and it's not to wedge off to the side. It's for you to understand anywhere along this plane of motion, including head to feet, is energy that is given. And once you reach your, your, your zone, if you will, your range, that's it. Anything further, you're asking to, be, you're asking to have your, your grappling range violated. Perfect. Right here. Yun. Stay in right here. And I'm just drawn back. How am I relating elbow to the, to the wrist, to my hips, to my knees, to my head, my shoulder? How am I relating all of this? I'm, it's self-exploration of this is the area my grappling lives with. You're doing it at a slow pace, but over time, how explosively can you incorporate it within the necessary uh, uh, di dictated uh, fight that's happening? The first form is anti-grappling. It's all there. It is not in the turning and the footwork of Chum Q. It's in the first form. It's in the very first movement. It's anti-grappling. 
right here. It's your your knowledge. It's right. It's not a technique too. It's a concept from head to toe. I got to be aware of everything. Every ball bearing, my ankles, my knees, my hips, my spines, they are shooting and projecting an entire, let's call this 180, right? Because the other side would be 360, 180 degrees from top to bottom. It's 180 degrees this way. And then what from every zone as wide as my shoulders are, they're spinning angles. Every, it's infinite. It is an infinite possibility of combinations with your joints going forward, but they don't pass this area. What is the difference? There was no difference. This is where I started. But if I'm back, I have a better bracing back position. That's all that is, right? A better back bracing position. Well, does that mean you go from this? No, because then you're moving your, 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 your axis. Here in this position, I did not have my weight deviated over my front leg. I had a 50-50, but I had a back leg stronger stance to be able to explode in forward and tense, right, for a, for a takedown. There's no difference between that explosion and that explosion. Guys, wrestling lives in Wing Chun. You do not need to incorporate other martial arts. I really wish that more people would take the time to explain it and explore it. And I don't think, I think we need to get over the concept of you need to add X, Y, and Z. It's all fucking there. Because if it wasn't, for me personally, I would have gone to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu 10 years ago. I would have gone to boxing you know, 10 years ago. I have never found, for me personally, any other need to drift from Wing Chun because it doesn't matter if I'm 5'7, 160, 5'7, 225, older, bad cardiovascular shape, big gut, wide shoulders, thick back. Doesn't matter where I'm at. The core concepts of Wing Chun are limitless. This is why I've said a million times, man, if all Bruce Lee did was stick to his study and explore it. And, and this is also, too, I'm not a 32-year-old impatient man. I'm 47. That is, I've been studying this art for 25 years, studying it, frustrated, no, writing down notes, asking, why did this Sifu say this? Why did Sifu say that? I don't agree with this. And then going back to my notes from 15 years ago saying, holy crap, I can't believe I didn't know this. It's a never-ending journey for me. I hope you're enjoying this content. I hope you're enjoying these, these tutelage uh, uh, con uh, concept videos, if you will. I enjoy the application, but it's not about me. It's about you. You got to see if you can make this work for you. I hope you guys enjoy this. I'll see you in the next video.